The shared services teams, as requested by the Board of Regents, have been formed. Uh, team leaders and members have been named and work has already begun. Uh, news release, which will include the committee's memberships, will be distributed within a, a day or two. The charge to the team leaders is to reduce administrative, repeat that, administrative expenses by at least $20 million by increasing efficiency without sacrificing quality. This will be a completely transparent process. A website is being developed to report the progress of the teams. You will notice that faculty will be members of some of the teams and input will certainly be solicited from faculty on any of the areas in which you are stakeholders. We've been working on shared services for at least three years. This is a renewed emphasis and it will be transparent. There is no attempt to take over anything in order to get anybody's money. In fact, Dr. Lofton's uh, request for a financial analysis of the provost and the VPR's office will help everyone clearly see which college generates the money. Tuition and formula. We'll, we'll have that figured out where you can see how much money each college generates, including research, and where the money is spent. Same information will be clarified for research and research indirect cost recovery. No one is suggesting any changes. Dr. Lofton is simply insisting on easily understood transparency. Please wait for the results before assigning motives to the quest for information. Faculty will be involved by Dr. Lofton Dr. Watson and Dr. Vitter throughout the process. Governor Rick Perry is a devoted Aggie and my friend. Any idea that he is involved in the day-to-day -day operations of Texas A&M is flat wrong. In the 25 years that I have known Rick Perry, he has never once mentioned even a thought about being president or chancellor of A&E. He likes serving as governor of Texas. And from all indications, he intends to continue doing so. The conspiracy theories of some secret plan are simply illogical. I also do not have a desire to be the president of Texas A&M University, nor am I interested in managing the day-to-day -day affairs of Texas A&M. I do have a desire and a commitment to fulfill my oversight responsibilities as chancellor for all of the system universities and agencies as envisioned by the legislature. There's a natural tension between the system and the flagship universities. You don't think so? Ask previous presidents, previous chancellors. There are times when I will make recommendations to a president regarding personnel or a program, but I also let presidents know they are welcome to disagree with me, and ultimately the decision is theirs. At times I can be very passionate about the potential in a particular area, but I do not try to impose a solution when others have specific responsibility and accountability for the decision. As some of you know, I am a passionate ally in attempts to recruit members of the National Academy of Science and the National Academy of Engineering, as well as other stars. Some of you know I have also asserted whatever influence I might have keep some of our current stars from leading for greener passengers. Similarly, regents will hear input in a spirit of shared governance. The stakeholders, me included, cannot impose our will on the governing authority. We can only work through persuasion. Some believe the recent disagreement over the leadership of Texas A&M University will imperil the future efforts to attract talent. 
I believe in my heart that is not the case. But to some extent, that's up to you. The more we drag out disagreements of the past, then the more likely that there will exist a perception that Texas A&M is in trouble. I can tell you it is not my desire to reignite past disagreements. I hope that you join me in that sentiment. Shakespeare said the past is prologue. And I believe the past can be passed if we agree to work together for the sake of the future. One of the main responsibilities of a university is to take the wisdom of the past to develop the hopes and the dreams of the future. What the future is about is those 48,000 students who will show up here this morning. <coughs> why I'm here, the a and system. And I would suggest that that is why each and every one of you chose to enter this profession. I want these students to partake in the best educational environment in the country, a place that stretches their potential and that leads them to pathways of opportunity. As faculty, you have a voice, and you can choose to use that voice to open wounds or to heal them. I'm a physician by training. I like healing wounds. I can't think of a better person to help us begin that healing process than an outstanding leader with impeccable academic credentials who is the interim president of Texas A&M University, Dr. Bowen Long. I'm thankful to him for taking the helm of leadership at this very important and trying time. I asked the speaker for written questions that he felt needed answered. He told me, quote, the EC has no set of prepared questions that we intend to pose, end quote. I want all that including the senators, I want all faculty to know that I am willing and anxious to engage in face-to-face -face dialogue concerning the future path of this great university and the Texas A&M University Center system. Simply call my office. My office number is 458-6000. You simply call my office, arrange a meeting. I have always, always maintained open door policy. Thank you all. I appreciate your commitment to Texas A&M University.